Welcome to the FlexiCraft Industries Introduction to Rubber Expansion Joints as part of our Flexible Piping Solutions video training series. FlexiCraft has 50 years of experience, and during that time, we've been committed to perfecting our offerings of rubber and metal expansion joints and other flexible piping elements of every type. This puts us in an excellent position to provide perspective for helping you to choose the ideal products, and perhaps even more important, how best to use them. You can find detailed information on every product at FlexiCraft.com after first choosing the appropriate product family. This video presentation will briefly review the most important concepts in the choice and application of rubber expansion joints. It includes more details on these joints than the information in our overview video, which helps to tie together all the flexible piping solutions. We also have video presentations specific to the product families of metal expansion joints, as well as braided flexible connectors and loops. We'll cover some important background information, including the thrust load concept, which is also covered in our overview video. Understanding thrust load is essential for proper use of these products. Okay, let's get started with our review of rubber expansion joints. Rubber joints are made with various rubber elastomers with different properties. Most of the common elastomers are rated between 200 and 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and they're not used in steam or other very hot systems, where metal expansion joints are more common. Temperature is usually the main determinant of the expected life of a rubber joint. The common rubber elastomer choices are EPDM, neoprene, butyl, or nitrile, viton, natural rubber, and others are also possible. The ideal rubber for a given application can be judged in part by the properties table in our catalog. But you can contact FlexiCraft for a recommendation, especially for a given chemical compatibility check. Rubber joints are needed for a few reasons, including piping misalignment lateral offsets from initial construction, as well as from long-term settlement. This includes offsets that can damage equipment, such as pumps. Absorbing vibration and noise from pumps and other equipment is also an important application. When connected directly to pumps in this way, rubber expansion joints are often referred to as simply flexible pump connectors. Thermal expansion of piping is another important use for rubber joints, even though it's not as dominant an application as it is with metal expansion joints. If straight pipe sections between pipe anchors expand without added flexibility, the loads on the anchors will likely be too much for the system to withstand. We see here a model of a pipe run with anchors on either end. Note that the anchors are shown close together just for visualization here in our pipe system model, but in any real system, they would be very far apart. If we first remove the anchors and the pipe heats up, as indicated by the rising thermometer level, the pipe grows as shown. When the pipe anchors are added, and the pipe again heats up and begins to expand, the immense thermal load on the anchors will build until they fail. Now when we add in an expansion joint between the anchors, as the pipe heats up and expands, the joint compresses to compensate for the movement, and there are now minimal thermal loads on the anchors and pipe. The movements that these joints can make for these applications are axial compression or extension, lateral offset, and angular deflection. Some torsion is also possible. The movements are largely a function of a rounded arch or arches in the joint. There are two main rubber joint styles, commonly referred to as spools and spheres, each with different design elements, including the types of arches used. Spheres, such as the FlexiCraft Ultra Spheres, are economical and are most popular as flexible pump connectors. They have an extended ball shaped arch and lips that extend through thick metal flanges that seal against the mating flanges. The metal flange holes are often tapped for ease of installation, so a backing nut isn't needed. The joining bolts simply screw into the flanges. If preferred, the holes can be drilled with no tapping. Another advantage of the metal flange and rubber lip is that the flange is allowed to float. That is, it can be rotated to line up with the holes on the mating flanges if needed. The flanges are normally drilled to a 150-pound ANSI drill pattern, but are also available in 300-pound or metric drill patterns. The flange material is normally galvanized carbon steel, which does not come into contact with the fluid. 
The UltraSphere's are also available in the UltraSphere Twin, with two round arches, which allows for additional movement and vibration absorption. Spools, such as the FlexiCraft Ultra Spools, have a robust design with full rubber-faced flanges that make an excellent seal against the mating flanges. The metal flange backing rings, also called retaining rings, are split and easily removable. The rings are normally galvanized carbon steel, but are available in 304 or 316 stainless steel as well. Like the Sphere's metal flanges, the metal retaining rings do not come into contact with the fluid. The spools have half-circle arches that can be filled to provide a smooth bore, or additional arches can be added for greater movements. Integral PTFE liners are also available that conform to the spool's arch, which can be important for highly aggressive chemicals. Both main styles are nearly always connected with flanges, but it's possible to sleeve on a rubber expansion joint over a pipe using clamps. For example, our model SLV coupling is available up to 12-inch diameters, with the inner diameters sized to go over steel and PVC pipe. In a moment, we'll go over additional application points involving optional tie rods. But first, Paul Berg from FlexiCraft has an overview of the critical and often misunderstood concept of thrust load that applies to all pressurized flexible elements. This load is key to understanding the use of tie rods. So what exactly is pressure thrust load? To understand it, we can start by looking at a bendable straw example where the bending section represents an expansion joint. If one end of the straw is plugged, and if we could blow into the other end hard enough, what we would see is the bendable section getting stretched out. The force on the plug from the pressure would force apart the bendable section, but not stretch the rest of the stiff straw. That pressure force acting on the plug is the thrust load and is equal to the pressure times the cross-sectional area. We can now go back to our pipe system model, at first without the anchors. This time we pressurize the pipe instead of heating it up. The pipe acts as though it's plugged with the thrust load acting on both ends because of elbows and other ends down the line. Notice there is no movement of the pipe because the pipe wall is too stiff to be moved by the thrust load. But if we cut a hole in the same pipe and add an expansion joint, we have a model like the bendable straw. Now when we again pressurize the unanchored system, we can see the joint will stretch out to failure because it's not stiff like the pipe. When we now add back the pipe anchors and again pressurize, the joint does not stretch out from the thrust load because the anchors are preventing that. But if the anchors are not designed to withstand the new load, they can fail and consequently then allow the joint to stretch out and also fail. Tie rods are sometimes added as an attempt to absorb the thrust load so the anchors don't have to. The issue with this approach in a straight pipe run is that if the joint compresses, the nuts attached to the rods will separate from the lugs. When they separate, they no longer shoulder the load. So trying to use tie rods to handle the thrust load only works if axial movement isn't needed. And we have seen this isn't the case much of the time when thermal pipe growth is involved. Let's take a look at this on our pipe model. We see the pipe system first get pressurized quickly before heating up. At this point, the tie rods are working to absorb the thrust load so the anchors don't have to. But when the system starts to heat up, the tie rods disengage from the lugs as the joint compresses, and the thrust load gets transferred to the anchors, possibly causing them to fail as before. So what is the solution to the new pressure thrust load? Well, one solution is to simply ensure the anchors are large enough to withstand it, as we see them getting larger here. Now when the pressure and temperature both rise, the system works as it should. So the anchors must be designed for the force of the thrust load, which is equal to the effective cross-sectional area of the bellows multiplied by the pressure. In addition to the thrust load, a second load, the spring load, is added to the anchors when the joint moves, which is equal to the joint spring rate times the movement. The spring load is usually considerably smaller than the thrust load, and it normally does not cause the confusion thrust load often does. The effective area and spring rate parameters of the joints are listed in our tables and submittal sheets for our various models. 
These are normally required input parameters for computer piping models when using joints, but the loads can also be simply calculated by hand. I hope that this explanation of thrust load helps to put the use and design of these products into better perspective. Now that we've reviewed the thrust load concept, we can follow up with additional important notes on the use of tie rods with rubber joints. Tie rods are part of what's referred to as control units for rubber expansion joints. The control units include gusset plate lugs in addition to the rods. Unlike tie rod lugs used for metal expansion joints that are welded to the joint flanges or ends at the Flexicraft factory, rubber joint gusset plates and rods must be installed in the field. After the joint is placed in the pipeline breech and partially bolted up, the control units are bolted on the outside of the mating flanges to complete the installation. Extension of the joint is now prevented. The material of the control units is most often galvanized steel, but 304 and 316 stainless steel are available for chemically aggressive environments. Generally, the material choice should match that of the flange retaining rings, as both are exposed to the same environmental conditions. As we've seen, the use of tie rods to control thrust load where axial compression of the joint is expected does not usually work because the rods will disengage. However, tie rods are well suited to control thrust load where lateral offset movement is expected from misalignment and settling as the rods absorb the load all through the movement. Improper use of control rods, including not using them where appropriate, is the most common cause of problems with these expansion joints. A form of this problem is seen when the thrust load is allowed to act on a pump outlet nozzle for flexible pump connector applications. With no acting tie rods to absorb the thrust load, the allowable pump nozzle loads are often exceeded, which can damage the pump. It's worth noting that with another type of popular flexible pump connector, the braided hose type flexible connector, the braid acts to absorb the thrust load in a similar way to tie rods. Finally, the industry has standardized the diameter and number of rods required for a given joint size and system pressure. The pressure used for this determination should be the larger of the test or design pressures. That covers the basic choices and considerations for rubber expansion joints. We hope you found this informative and that you'll think of Flexicraft as the first name in flexible piping solutions. Be sure to check out our other videos including an overview video of all the main options. We would love to hear from you with any questions and to consult with you on your applications. If you're writing specifications, be sure to check out our specification assistance on each product page, which include helpful insights. And finally, if you have a need to extend your flexible piping solutions to any type of industrial hose, please see the website for our division, Hosecraft USA at www.hosecraftusa.com. Thanks again for your attention and consideration. We hope to work with you soon.